13 may be unlucky for some, but the Python team don't seem faced at all, with plenty more advances coming in a year's time. Python 3.12 sought out to revolutionise the way Python works, but only got as far as laying the groundwork, albeit alongside a plethora of other optimizations and improvements. Python 3.13 is looking to expand upon this work, but may also be wanting to revolutionise in more ways than one. Even though only one alpha version has been released so far, we already have a good idea of what the vision for Python 3.13 is, so let's dive in and take a look. I guess we'll get all the Gil stuff out of the way, shall we? I've already talked quite a bit about this in the 3.12 release video, as well as the video I made on the Gil and the plans to potentially remove it, so I won't delve too much on that here. A quick TLDR for those that are just hearing about this for the first time though, PEP703 proposes being able to opt out of the Gil by means of creating two flavours of Python, with the aim of removing it entirely by about 3.18. A gil Python prototype based on 3.12 has already shown to have huge performance benefits, but the effects on single-threaded performance, as well as the anticipated distribution problems will mean it will be a while before we see anything concrete regarding the future of these plans. One thing I didn't talk about much in that video is the other effort to increase multi-threaded performance, subinterpreters. This builds on the work expended to bring a per-interpreter gil system into 3.12, and when it's released will be the only way to get true multi-core performance out of Python in a single process. The actual implementation of the new interpreters module is worlds apart from threading and multiprocessing, requiring raw source code to be passed directly into the interpreter instead of callables, but this new approach does allow for the use of alternate concurrency models like CSP, which I'm not going to talk about in this video, but actually sounds really cool. Interpreters will also be lighter and, potentially, faster than multiprocessing, with a far greater scaling capability, so it'd be interesting to see how it sits alongside Gilless Python. Now while that's out of the way, how about we get stuck into some of the syntax changes 3.13 has to offer? Another follow-on from 3.12 is the ability to subscript functions, which serves as an extension to the type parameter syntax introduced in PEP695. Where that allows users to provide cleaner generic types, this gives them more explicit control over types produced by the type checker in situations where they're unable to be inferred. One thing that has always been missing from Python is a consistent way to mark deprecations, but that changes in 3.13 with the new warnings.deprecated decorator. This decorator will provide a mechanism that type checkers can use to warn developers of deprecated functionality, and will also raise a deprecated warning at runtime. These changes will allow developers to spot when migrations need to be made, hopefully avoiding situations like the unit test deprecation debacle around the time of 3.11's release, where the removed components had to be re-added to give people more time to migrate. This is, once again, brought on by its inclusion in other languages, as well as many feature requests to third-party type checking libraries. Modules got get atra and dear dunder functions in 3.7, and in 3.13 we'll be getting setatra and delatra dunders as well. You'll be able to use this to make constants truly immutable, albeit rather scrappily, or apply validations to top level variables. You'll also be able to control how variables get deleted, or prevent them from being deletable entirely. While I myself largely subscribe to the ethos of if someone breaks everything by doing something stupid it's their fault, I can see this being used to flag errors at the point of origin instead of being raised further down the line by something seemingly unrelated, or being used to prevent potentially undetectable, non-error raising problems. In terms of deprecations and removals, 3.13 is pretty intense. Back in 3.11, a truckload of old, largely unused, and in one instance downright dangerous, modules were deprecated. A number of these modules have replacements, and those that don't largely cater for long defunct technologies. These dead batteries, as PEP594 refers to them as, are AIFC, Audio Op, CGI, CGI Traceback, Chunk, Crypt, Image header, mail cap, MSI lib, NIS, NNTP lib, OSS audio dev, pipes, sound header, shadow password, sun AU, telnet lib, UU, and XDR lib. The get opt and opt pass modules have been soft deprecated, meaning they shouldn't be used in new code but remain safe in old code. They were originally up for removal as per PET594, but the decision was reversed after it was met with resistance. There are plenty more changes already planned for 3.13, but a lot of those won't affect the average user, so I'll leave those alone for now. If you do want to read up further on some of these changes, as well as the ones I've talked about in this video, I'll leave links to the videos I discussed earlier, as well as every pet mark for Python 3.13 in the description below. What are you most excited about in the Python 3.13 release so far? Let me know in the comments below, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing if you want to see more like it. Much like last year, I'll be back for the release of the first beta to see how everything's coming along, but I've got some crackers coming up in the meantime, so hopefully I'll catch you for those. See ya!